Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us for the 2021 ACT Australian of the Year Awards, Yulma. My name's Paula Kruger from ABC Radio, and it's my great pleasure to be your host uh, this evening in the beautiful setting of Gandalf Hall at the National Gallery of Australia. Now, although the proceedings will look a little different uh, this year, that's due to our social distancing regulations, we still have a very prestigious event ahead of us this evening. To those present, please enjoy the occasion, but make sure you stay COVID safe. And uh, to those watching online, hope you enjoy the show. This year of all years, the Aussie spirit has come to the fore. Through natural disasters, coronavirus, lockdowns, our nation heroes, uh, have they've inspired awe with their acts of selflessness. Whether braving bushfires to save lives of people and wildlife, showing kindness through charity to help those in need, or caring for those who have suffered during the ongoing pandemic. The best of us have displayed the qualities that make us proud to call Australia home. And it has been a truly extraordinary year. And our nominees, are truly extraordinary Australians. We don't often get the chance to thank them in person, and tonight is your opportunity to do so. So thank you to all our nominees present here. Now, this evening, you're also welcome to join us in recognising our heroes by uh, posting on social media. Uh, so please share your, resport, uh, your support, I should say, for the Australian of the Year hashtag on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. So that is hashtag AUS of the Year. Once again, hashtag AUS of the Year for Australian of the Year. But right now, I'd like to invite to the stage Auntie Violet Sheridan to welcome us to country. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and isn't it, 12 months has gone so quick. So I'm a little bit sad tonight. We haven't seen, we're missing one face at the table. Sue Salt House, such a lovely woman, a gorgeous lady and a passionate lady. So may she rest in peace and in God's care. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here this evening to perform Welcome to Country. I'm actually excited too, but she kept it a secret. Auntie Caroline News, but I worked it out. She doesn't know that, but I did. So I'm excited that she's been nominated and I will be keeping my fingers crossed. I'm sorry the other nominees. <laughs> so, uh, good evening and welcome to this special evening which, which celebrates the unique gifts of people that live in Canberra. The ACT Australian of the Year Award recognises your personal endeavours in making our community stronger and better for all of us. I have been asked to, to welcome you all here this evening to the land of the Ngunnawal people. It is my pleasure to be here, to be able to congratulate all the nominees who have been recognised for their achievements and contribution they make to the ACT community. And I wish all of the nominees all the best. I stand here in this place this evening where once my ancestors before me walked told stories many thousands of years ago. I am a proud Ngunnawal woman. As I carry my ancestors in spirit with me, as I walk into the future teaching the next generation about the oldest culture in the world, the Ngunnawal Aboriginal culture. I'd like to acknowledge minister, ministers, members in the, of the ACT Assembly, uh, Leslie Assembly, I could never say that word, my tongue always gets tangled. I could, took me a long time to say ointment, tell you I got it right. <laughs> the Honourable David Smith MP, Cathy Lee, Head of Services AT Government, Professor Tom Karma, Australian Order ACT Selection Panel Chair, National Australia Day Council members, Carly Brand, CEO of National Australia Day Council, our 2021 nominees, 
And also, I would like to acknowledge um, the chair of the elected body, uh, Katrina Fanning. Distinguished guest, I'd also like to um, pay my respects to my elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people present here this evening. I'd also like to extend that respect to the non-Aboriginal people present. In keeping the general spirit and friendship and reconciliation, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening on behalf of my people, the traditional owners of the land that you are meeting on tonight, the Ngunnawal people. Always was, always will be Ngunnawal land. Thank you. Thank you so much, Auntie. You honour us with your very warm welcome to country. I now would like to invite Ruth O'Brien to uh, perform the national anthem, and if you can all rise for the national anthem as well. Thank you very much, Ruth O'Brien. Inspiring rendition of the national anthem. I would like to invite the ACT selection panel chair, Professor Tom Kalmer, to say a few words, give his best wishes to our nominees this evening. Thank you, Paul. Um, Annie Violet, thank you, and uh, I pay my respects and regards to the Ngunnawal peoples on whose land we're meeting today. ACT Chief Minister uh, Andrew Barr, uh, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, and of course, all the nominees who are here tonight. It is an honour to attend tonight as the ACT Selection Panel Chair to recognise our outstanding Australians and their immense contribution to our community. It is never an easy decision to select the nominees each year, and I thank fellow panellists who are amongst us for their service and commitment to assessing nominations and selecting the finalists to represent the ACT in the 2021 awards. Our community is filled with many dedicated individuals and all endeavours and of all endeavours and backgrounds uh, who are striving to improve the lives of others and to make a better Canberra. 5,352 nominations were made nationally for the uh, 2021 Australian of the Year Awards. That's a 118% increase from 2020. That demonstrates a significant surge in the efforts of individuals in response to the extraordinary events of the past 12 months. And we in Canberra have felt them more than anybody. And more so um, to recognise all nominees and our finalists for their services. We must show our support and appreciation for these incredible people to renew their determination and passion to continue advocating for their causes into the future. Of the national nominations this year, 257 were made for, the AC, for ACT community members and tonight we are celebrating our top 15 nominees. I congratulate each of you uh, on your achievements uh, that have led you here tonight and please accept my best wishes and the best wishes of the select, selection panel for the future. Thank you and good luck.
Thank you, Professor Kalma, and to all the selection panel members uh, for their efforts in assessing, selecting, uh, the, uh, and selecting the ACT nominations this year. As you just heard, we received more than double the number of award nominations this year. And that's reflecting the enormous challenges that we've all faced together. From those nominations that identify with our community in the ACT, the ACT panel has selected 16 incredible people who are being celebrated this evening. One recipient uh, will soon be announced in each category. Those categories are the Australian Local Hero, Young Australian of the Year, Senior Australian of the Year, and Australian of the Year. These four will then go on to join other state and territory recipients at the national awards on the eve of Australia Day, announced by the Prime Minister and broadcast live on ABC TV and iview. Whatever the outcome this evening, all our nominees richly deserve to be here. We congratulate them in reaching this important stage of the nation's most prestigious awards program. Congratulations to you all. And now to invite our guest of honour, ACT Chief Minister Andrew Barr, to share some words and please give him a warm welcome. Thank you very much, Paula, and thank you, Auntie Violet, for welcome to country. Dawanuna, uh, Dawanunawal, the language of an Anawal, this is an Anawal country, and I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and acknowledge other Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people who are with us this evening. Can I extend uh, my welcome too to colleagues from the Legislative Assembly, including some new members who will be sworn in tomorrow. Uh, for the first time in the Assembly. I acknowledge David Smith, uh, our local federal member for Bean, Cathy Lee, head of the ACT Public Service, Professor Tom Karma, chair of our ACT selection panel, other National Australia Day Council Board members, Carly Brand, CEO, importantly, our 2021 nominees, family and friends. And if I haven't covered any, everyone, the other distinguished guests, who join us this evening. It's wonderful to be here. I must confess it's nice to be able to talk to a room of people rather than a computer screen. And I think that's a reflection uh, of just how well this community has responded to the challenges of this year. From bushfires, toxic smoke, crazy hailstorms that have done billions of dollars damage to a global pandemic, 2020 has thrown pretty much everything at this community. But we're a resilient bunch and we're here and we're able to gather together in a room to acknowledge the tremendous contribution uh, of our fellow Canberrans and fellow Australians. And the awards tonight recognise those achievements and contributions, people who go above and beyond to make our city more inclusive, more progressive and more connected. And there's never I think, a time in, in our lives where we've had to reflect upon just how important those things are than this year. And so on behalf of the ACT government, the ACT Parliament and the broader community, to each of our nominees tonight, thank you. You're all leaders in your fields. You demonstrate courage and resilience. You're role models who inspire us all. You represent such a diverse range of endeavours, advocates for veterans, disadvantaged children, youth and women, domestic violence prevention, historians, educators, leaders in public health and champions for our First Nations people. You are all part of the rich fabric of our community and it's an honour to be here and to share your stories tonight. As we celebrate our 2021 recipients, I would also like to acknowledge the contributions of our outgoing 2020 ACT Australians of the Year, Katrina Fanning, Julia Rowlings, 
Maddie Diamond and the late Sue Salthouse. Now, as you will know, we sadly said goodbye to Sue this year, our 2020 ACT Senior Australian of the Year. And in an event in this very venue, we celebrated her life and all that Sue contributed to this community. It was an important event, an uplifting event that celebrated Sue and her tremendous contribution. Her efforts paved the way for so many. And what was clear from that event is that there were many who will carry on Sue's legacy. I want to thank Katrina, Julie and Maddie for their tremendous work and that I know will continue into the future. I want to acknowledge and thank Professor Karma and the selection panel. It's a difficult task. It's one you volunteer wholeheartedly for. And thank you for the role that you've played in selecting tonight's nominees and recipients. It's never easy to choose from so many diverse individuals, so many deserving individuals. And I thank you for your commitment to selecting the amazing people in our community who've been nominated for the award tonight. And finally, to the nominees, to their family and friends, all of those who've supported them, thank you. I wish you all the best this evening and in the next phase as you go on to represent the ACT as part of the Australian Awards. It's an enormous achievement to be here and to be supported and recognised by your community. Enjoy the evening and good luck for our recipients in January 2021, the beginning of a new year when we can put 2020 behind us and look forward to celebrating what's great about our city and our nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief Minister, for your inspiring words this evening. Now it's down to business. Our first, word to, our first award tonight is Australia's Local Hero. Now this award recognises Australians making a significant contribution in their local community. Let's take a closer look at this category and the important work of the amazing recipients over the years. Local heroes are really important to keeping Australian communities strong because they're the glue. They're there to inspire, to communicate with, to stay motivated, to lift everybody in that community when the chips are down. I stand before you not as an individual, but as a proud representative of every teacher around the country. Community is much more than belonging to something. It's about doing something together that makes belonging matter. Anything's possible, you are the answer, and it only starts with a simple thing. Australia's Local Hero category was added to reflect so many Australians out there that contribute to their local community. When I give, I feel incredible joy, but I also feel this great sense of connection. Our local heroes are everyday Australians who achieve extraordinary things. These are Australians who we celebrate as an example of what we can achieve when we put others before ourselves. Australia's Local Hero Award celebrates remarkable Australians who go above and beyond to be active citizens, making extraordinary contributions in their local communities and showcasing our Australian values. They do not seek praise, but simply want to make their community a better place. So congratulations to all of the finalists in the Australia Local Hero Awards. Out of our almost countless millions of fellow Australians, we choose this handful each year to honour them, to support them and to encourage them. Out of our tragedy, we created Dolly's Dream, a vision to educate families and communities on the impacts that bullying has on young lives. To our Aussie kids, doing it tough, hang on, don't give up, help's on the way. These are the people that form the fabric of our nation. They're on call 24-7 and will jump whenever there's an emergency or someone needs help. And as I say, they show you what's great about the people of Australia.
This is a category that acknowledges so much vital work at a local level throughout our community. And the nominees for the 2021 ACT Local Hero are Amanda Doleshi, the ACT's only fully certified Australian Sign Language interpreter. She has dedicated her life to ensuring that the deaf community receive the exact same message that their hearing peers do. In the past year, Amanda has come out of retirement to assist the state and federal government throughout the bushfires and COVID-19 crisis, providing simultaneous Auslan interpretation for government officials on a near daily basis. Her constant presence at press conferences has enabled Deaf Australians to have access to crucial information to navigate these significant challenges. Timothy Miller, founder of Lids for Kids, which encourages households, schools, businesses and organisations to collect plastic lids to be recycled into sustainable products for children. Lids for Kids now has over 25,000 participants across Australia. Tim coordinates leaders from all states to spread the message about lids for kids in their communities and collect, clean and sort lids from drop-off points around towns and cities. His efforts have saved millions of lids from landfill while educating children about the issue of plastic waste and empowering them to take action. Chiaka Monake, who is helping rebuild the lives of domestic violence victims and empowering them to live with confidence and purpose. Chiaka works to destigmatize divorce in the African Australian community, supporting women to leave violent relationships, providing shelter in her own home, and linking victims with appropriate support services. A passionate advocate for empowering women through education, Chiaka sponsors and mentors women and girls at various academic levels. She is a champion for Nigerian culture and has been the African Village Coordinator for the National Multicultural Festival for over six years. Jessica Peel, a volunteer who is passionate about raising funds and awareness for community organisations. For the past two years, Jess has participated in the 777 Marathon event completing seven marathons in seven states over seven days to raise awareness and funds for the charity Bravehearts. Bravehearts offers protection and empowerment for children who have been sexually assaulted and education around spotting the warning signs and speaking up. Jess has dedicated months to training and seeking support from major businesses, so far raising more than $88,000 for the charity. Amazing people doing amazing things. Can I ask the four nominees to stand up where you are and please join me in giving them a warm round of applause. So the four of you. And I'd like to welcome back to the stage our Chief Minister and 2020 local hero, Julia Rowlings. Uh, please join me on the stage, the both of you. Well, it's been a bit of a year. Um, I won't say a lot, but I did want to say that, you know, with everything that's happened, the Australian of the Year Awards just shone out for me as a beacon in the midst of some incredible turmoil this year um, and gave me the opportunity to meet some incredible people. And um, Sue and everybody else, um, it's been a wonderful opportunity and it's a real delight to be here now and passing it on to the next year. So it's an honour to be able to do this. The 2021 local hero for the ACT is Timothy Miller.
Congratulations, Tim. Take a breath. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel like my heart's going to burst out of my chest. Oh, look, you'll be right. Just tell us a little bit, Tim, about what inspired you to do what you do. Um, I think one of the things that most inspires me is all the people that I meet um, day to day that are either suffering similar medical conditions that I am, whether it's chronic pain or incurable illness, um, people that are suffering anxiety and depression, and particularly throughout COVID, just social isolation. And whether you're a four-year-old or a 94-year-old, just that helplessness of not really feeling like you have much left to offer the community anymore. And then just finding something that's so simple that you can do, that anyone can do to make a real difference in their community. Um, and just knowing and being inspired by everyone every day that there really is something that you can do to make your little corner of the world a better place. Why is that so important? You say that you don't want people to feel helpless. Why is this work important? Um, I think the most, the most important part that I find with all of the charity work and all of the inspirational stuff that so many of us are involved with is just finding something that makes you feel valued at any age and particularly as you, you, know, you retire or you find that you're not well enough to do the job that you had that you thought you, was going to be your career or you mourn uh, for, the, for the life and the career that you ha used to have before you got diagnosed with something and became very ill, is just knowing that you still have something left to offer, um, regardless of your age and your capacity. Um, this project that I do, I, I run it from bed with a smartphone. You know, I'm very lucky that we have tens of thousands of volunteers that do the groundwork. I do much as I physically can, um, but having something where you're just not on, you're not left on the rubbish heap. You really do have a lot that you can still offer. What impact have you seen your work have in the community? Um, to be honest, I thought the recycling project would have, uh, the biggest impact was just rescuing plastic from landfill. It, you know, something as simple as a lid, you think, well, it's completely recyclable. Um, it is something that can be turned into another product, but just in 2020, it's still something that worldwide can't actually be processed by the recycling machines. So it does go to landfill. And I thought that would be the thing that would have the biggest impact, but it hasn't. It's been the community, the community connections that have been made and the social inclusion that I've found that week to week hosting sorting workshops and visiting hospitals and working people with dementia and Alzheimer's or kids with autism um, or cerebral palsy, still finding that there's something incredibly meaningful that they can do and they, and they really get a kick of knowing, you know, even a four-year-old understands the benefit of rescuing a small piece of plastic and not letting it go to the oceans, the rivers, the landfill. And Tim, just finally, you know, the, the award, what, what impact do you think it will have on delivering the work that you do? Um, what I'm really hoping it will have is just to inspire um, everyday people in every town in Australia to just get, get like-minded people together and rescue this plastic. But it's not just plastic, it's any single product that you bring home from the, from the supermarket to think this product can have a second life. But not only that, to inspire local governments to really understand that the will is there. We're just regular mums and dads and kids and grandparents and everyone wants to see a change. And it's something simple as just, good Lord, stop buying crap, stop buying plastic, don't take it home in the first place. And encouraging local governments that there is a lot of stuff that we can't help but buy that does have plastic, so help us do something with it. Let the local government set up the, you've got to sort at the source. We need the places where we can take this and just being able to have like a one-stop recycling centre in every town where you can just rock up and you can drop off your tooth, toothbrush and your eyeglasses and your printer cartridges and your batteries and your glasses. The lids, plastic lids is just a 1% item. Every other item that you buy from the supermarket can potentially have a second life. Tim Miller, congratulations. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much, guys. And I just, just before I head off, I'm really incredibly humbled, like the three women that I was nominated with are a genuine, in the true sense of the word, actually heroes. So I really do congratulate you guys on the work that you've done. Um, and thanks so much to the committee for even considering a normal, boring, stay-at-home suburban house dad. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> and now to the Young Australian of the Year category. This award recognises inspiring young Australians aged between 16 and 30 who have accomplished great things already in all walks of life. Since 1979, we've had the Young Australian of the Year category, and that's acknowledging 16 to 30 year olds. And let's face it, youth is the future of the nation. I truly view this award not just as for me, but rather as an endorsement of the achievements of Australian women's football national team, and more broadly, Australian women's football and women's sport in general. Whether it be through encouragement, support, or their own ambition, we all deserve the chance to dream. So dream big Australia, because anything's possible. Inspiring others, educating others, you know, celebrating the fact that we have a fantastic country to live in where we can be um, and grow to our full potential. We have the power to shape the future and make Australia a place where we're all proud, where we all belong and where we stand united. This award ceremony is in a sense a celebration of the idea that individuals use his or her ability to give back to our great nation. To look at our young Australians of the year is to glimpse into the future of our great nation. Their tenacity, commitment and success defy their age. These are young Australians who are making a lasting difference to our great nation. It takes about one hour to wash and dry someone's clothes and after about two minutes of set up there's not a huge amount to do so we pull out the six orange chairs and everyone sits around and has a really nice chat and that one hour time is a really powerful time for that. You look for integrity, you look for human decency and you look for energy. For me it's uh, my whole life, all of my team, all of everyone that I work with, it's about being your authentic self. Um, like I said, just, just trying to do the best that you can regardless of what you do, whether it's in sport, in life, uh, in anything. So this is incredibly humbling and um, yeah, I know that uh, it's, it's going to be something that sits very, very, very high on my mental peace at home. I dream of an Australia where people are not afraid of learning Auslan, of having a go and uniting with a language that is uniquely Australian. When you look at what they've done, when you look at where they're going, we're in good hands. The nominees for the 2021 ACT Young Australian of the Year are... Nathan Barnden, a volunteer providing life-saving community service with the New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Despite living over two and a half hours away in Canberra, he's an active member of the Gillat New South Wales Brigade and protected the Bega Valley community during the 2020 bushfires. While fighting the blaze, he entered a burning house and rescued a family, an act of bravery that was widely reported and that the family believes saved their lives. As a leader of the young members of RFS, Nathan is passionate about improving the experiences of other young volunteers. Tara McClelland, a tireless advocate for the rights and well-being of ACT's young people. In her professional role as youth worker with the Salvation Army, Tara works with 16 to 25 year olds experiencing or at risk of experiencing homelessness and passionately advocates for mental health issues and youth empowerment. Tara devotes her free time to volunteering with several youth organisations holding events and information sessions to support emotional well-being. Her significant contribution has been recognised with a nomination for 2020 Young Canberra Citizen of the Year. Sarah O'Neill, a volunteer who dedicates her free time to providing respite and recreation for children under 12 with the Vinnie's Youth and Young Adults team. As senior leader of the St Joe's Youth Programs, Sarah has volunteered over 1,500 hours since 2016 for weekend activities, school holiday camps, monthly leadership meetings and training courses. 
She is particularly committed to the well-being of volunteers and has used her leadership position to advocate for formal programs and training to support and promote self-care. Once again, can I ask our four nominees uh, to stand up where you are uh, so we can see you and acknowledge you. Uh, please acknowledge them with a round of applause. Uh, now, if uh, our Chief Minister and 2020 Young Australian of the Year, Maddie Diamond, if you could uh, join me on the stage, please. Thanks for waiting. That was a bit of a journey from the back to the front. Um, I firstly just want to say congratulations to all of the nominees. It's really, really awesome to see you know, young people continue, t continuing on with their work and their activism throughout 2020. Um, it's been a really hard and scary year um, for all of us, but I think particularly young people are feeling quite nervous about the state of things, and rather than running from that, we're really stepping up um, and taking up those leadership roles, and particularly empowering other young people, which I think is just so important. We have to have solidarity with each other. So, yeah, it's amazing to see. I've had the chance to work with heaps of young people this year, and you know, the, the things that they tell me and the questions that they ask, it's clear to me that they're already, you know, they're learning, they're willing to step up to be leaders in their communities. Um, and it's just awesomely inspiring to see. So, the 2021 Young Australian of the Year for ACT is Tara McClelland. <laughs> <laughs> so Tara, tell us what inspired you to do what you do? Um, I think I'm inspired by the young people that I see in my work and in my volunteer roles. Um, young people are the future and as a young person myself I've always just felt like our voices need to be heard and our voices deserve the recognition for the incredible work that young people do. They're the future of this great nation and that's why I do what I do. Why is it important work? I think because anything that's going to help another young person is so important. I'm particularly passionate about mental health and it's something that I know so many young people struggle with and it's something that, you know, is, is shaping, uh, taking a great toll on our nation at the moment with everything that's been happening. And so anything that will promote and um, inspire young people to get their help and reach out and, you know, speak to others that might be suffering because you know, we're all in this together. You sound like a very busy person with all the work you do. <laughs> what kind of impact have you seen that work have on the community? I think anything that just gives a voice to young people has a huge impact. Um, I think that young people sometimes feel like we're not as important, we're the, we're the babies in the community, but that's not true. We are so important and our voices deserve to be heard. And I think that the community wants to listen. They want to know what the young people are thinking. They want to know what, what is impacting us at the moment and then how we can make that better. And now that you have this award, you know, it's, it's an amazing honour. What kind of difference do you think that will have on the work that you do, Tara? I think anything that just promotes young people, anything that um, is going to help spread the message for young people and get their voices heard for things that matter to them, things like mental health, things like climate change, things that are important to the young people of Australia today. Anything that spreads that message, anything that gets that awareness out there is going to have a huge impact. 
Tara McClellan, thank you. And once again, congratulations. Thank you. Twenty twenty has brought us many unforeseen events and sadly some incomprehensible losses. As many of you know, and as the Chief Minister mentioned earlier this evening, our 2020 senior Australian, Sue Salthouse, was tragically killed in an accident in July. Sue's sudden death shocked the community. She was a remarkable woman, and there was still so much, so much that she wanted to give. Our performer tonight, Ruth O'Brien, greatly admired Sue and everything that she stood for. When she learned of her passing, Ruth found a way to deal with her grief and pay tribute to this amazing woman through music. Ruth has written a song in Sue's honour, which she shared with Sue's family and friends at the State Memorial Service in August. And tonight we are privileged to have Ruth perform We Saw Your Soul this evening. She's performing it to farewell our 2020 senior Australian. Ruth, I invite you to the stage. Oh, you did, and everything you stood for. 
my trust to slow down now Round this city, round this country, even round the world Rest peacefully, take a bow We saw your soul Not that it was ever very hard to find Interweaved, connected and so entwined with all you need Thank you so much, Ruth. What a beautiful tribute. And also what a meaningful way for us to proceed to our next award, the Senior Australian of the Year. This award celebrates the ongoing achievements of Australians aged 65 and over who continue to not only challenge themselves, but inspire others. Our senior Australians are so inspiring, a lifetime of work, they can really show the young people of Australia a way forward and these awards where we recognise the Senior Australian of the Year is a real platform to put them in the spotlight. Only by accepting, correcting and building on mistakes can we eventually experience the satisfaction of doing something or seeing something that has never been done or seen before. I pray that all people in our wonderful country, Australia, regardless of language, culture, skin colour or religious belief, may stand tall as proud Australians. Reading is probably the most powerful thing that you can give to a child, reading and stories. It's a reflection and acknowledgement of people who have pretty much had a lifetime of making a contribution to this nation and inspiring those people around them. We are a nation built on stories and the stories our Senior Australians of the Year tell are of tireless dedication, perseverance and commitment to improving the lives of others. This award gives us an opportunity to celebrate our Senior Australians and the achievements of their life's work. Senior Australians have contributed greatly to the building of this nation. The Senior Australian of the Year Awards are an opportunity to recognise the outstanding contribution that you continue to make the people nominated for these awards are role models for their families, their peers, for all Australians, no matter their age. We need to remember that we adults are the drivers for the world our children experience every day. Raising children is so much more than a family responsibility. The road has not been easy and we need to be more accepting of each other. I stand here representing all of you. This is a whole of nation effort now and I'm very proud and thrilled that this award will help propagate our efforts. Our senior Australians have had a lifetime of experience, but it doesn't stop now. The Senior Australian of the Year category have and continue to shape our nation. And the nominees for the 2021 ACT Senior Australian of the Year are... A leading educator, Kerry Allen has transformed the lives of young children and teachers in Canberra for over 50 years. In her years of directing and teaching at primary schools, Kerry recognised the need for specialist training for music teachers. She co-founded Orff Music Institute and was an early president of the Kadai Institute, working to empower educators and change the way that music is taught in schools through innovative, dynamic and enthusiastic approaches. 
Upon retirement, Kerry has dedicated her life to teaching children with particular difficulties, helping them re-engage with the schooling system. Patricia Anderson, an Alyawara woman with a national and international reputation as a powerful advocate for the health of Australia's First Peoples. In an extensive career spanning community development, policy formation and research ethics, Pat has dedicated her life to nurturing understanding and compassion between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Australians. A widely published author, Pat has served as chair on many organisations and presented to the United Nations Working Group on Indigenous People. Her achievements have been recognised with an honorary doctorate, Order of Australia and numerous human rights awards. David Heden, historian, author, television presenter, researcher and cultural expert, who has dedicated his life to sharing important stories about Australia and the ACT. Over decades of work in academia, the public service, media and education, David has exemplified best practice in researching, writing and communicating to a broad audience. David has held leadership roles at important cultural institutions and is a regular commentator on cultural, political and social issues. Through published books, art exhibitions and television programs, he's detailed the making and shaping of our nation's capital. Beverly Orr, who has made a significant contribution to child protection for more than 30 years. She has been a foster carer of more than 300 children and provided support and counselling to countless others in her work as a therapeutic counsellor. Beverly is a passionate advocate for marginalised and vulnerable children through her involvement with organisations such as the Australian Foster Care Association. In 2009, she was recognised for her significant community sector work with an Order of Australia medal. Once again, I'd like to ask our four nominees uh, this evening for the, uh, for the Senior Australian of the Year to please stand up. Well done. And if our Chief Minister and our 2019 Senior Australian of the Year and good friend of uh, Sue Salthouse, Dr Sue Packer, could you please join me on the stage? I think this has to be the ultimate in bittersweet moments. It is wonderful to be here, but to be here because Sue is not here is quite devastating. She was a very good friend of mine. She taught me every time I met her. She was the most tactful, compassionate teacher um, who continued to teach me all the time about the complexities of living with disability. So um, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to catch up with so many people who are so special to me. And um, hello to Sue again. And the Senior Australian of the Year for 2021 is... Patricia Anderson.
Patricia Anderson, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And thanks. I'd like to sort of pay my respects um, to uh, Miss Salthouse. And uh, it's a bit da it's daunting enough standing up here, but then to realise um, that she was no longer here was a bit daunting, even more so. I'd like to thank Vi for the welcome to country. Thank you. Welcome us once again um, to this uh, beautiful part of our wonderful country. <laughs> Firstly, my congratulations to all of the nominees and all who participated in this process and the organisers. You know, it's never easy to find yourself at the front of these prestigious events, especially one this big. I'd like to take this opportunity to honour my parents, Gus and Molly Anderson, who first showed us the value of standing up for what was right, thus giving my sisters and I a strong sense of social justice. I'd also like, also like to acknowledge all of the people I grew up with in the Northern Territory, especially the Darwin people, and also, in particular, everybody at Prab Camp. These people set me on my life's path and are largely responsible for me standing here today, and I pay my respects to them. It's time for us all, all Australians, to settle the unfinished business between us, between First Nations peoples and other Australians, these days coming from a wonderful diversity of backgrounds and influences. In 2017, it was my privilege to be part of the deliber deliberative process which delivered the Uluru Statement from the Heart. This is offered to all Australians as a gift of hope. The statement calls for a constitutionally enshrined voice to Parliament, Makarata or settlement, together with truth-telling. We gifted this to you, the Australian people. You can accept this gift and walk with us. You can tell the Prime Minister and the Parliament that a referendum needs to be held to enshrine in the Constitution a voice to Parliament. This is real reform. The needs, this needs as many Australians as possible to send this message to the Prime Minister. This will begin at last to finish the unfinished business between us all. We have been calling for reform for generations. Any gains and achievements we have made over the generations has been through our continued activism. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is an invitation for you to join with us and tell our government that you support the Uluru Statement from the Heart, that as a nation, it is time to reckon with us, finish the unfinished business, heal the nation, it's time. However, this will require a high level of maturity and sophistication. But you know, let's do it. And thank you for this wonderful recognition. It's very heart-wrenching, thank you. And Patricia. <laughs> Sorry, we, we all want to hear more from you, Patricia. Patricia, you mentioned your family there as inspiring you earlier on. What else inspires you on a daily basis to do the work that you do? Oh, I think the task that I've just set out to heal the nation, I think it really is long overdue. And I think it's probably the most significant thing that's on our agenda these days. And I think there's an appetite for it, and this is the right time, so let's done, we'll get down and do it. We've been doing this since, <laughs> since forever, since pretty much the First Fleet. We've been at it a really, really long time. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is the latest activism that we've undertaken to change the mind of the nation, to indeed change the narrative. Sometimes I think Australians feel as though they don't quite belong here. Look, you know, we can fix that. We, we can fix that easily. And I think the time is right. There is a real appetite for change and real reform that's going to make a difference because that's what's required. But we can't do this with it. We can't do it ourselves. We actually really do need you um, to help us and to, to stand up and talk about and, and stand up for what you believe Australia is today. It's not like it was in 1901 at the time of the Constitution. It's a whole different country now with a whole range of different people coming from all parts of the world which make up this wonderful nation of ours called Australia. Thank you. 
Why is the sorry? I've still got more questions for you. Why is the work that you do so important, Patricia? Why? Yes. For all the things that I've just said, I've yes. spent my I've spent my life since I was 15, pretty much in that space. And what about this award that uh, you have? What difference will it make to the next step? Oh, it gives me a very respectable platform. <laughs> You've been very generous. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia Anderson. Now, before moving on to our final award this evening, I'd like to acknowledge the generous partners uh, who, together, make this awards program possible. So our national diversity and inclusion partner is Chevron. It helps us to inspire and foster unity and connect people of all ages and all backgrounds. The Australian of the Year category partner, Australia Post, supports our national recipient in the delivery of their vital messaging nationwide. The Department of Health is our category partner for the Senior Australian of the Year Award. And the Department of Home Affairs is the Local Hero uh, category partner. We thank our broadcast partner, the ABC, who will screen the national announcement live on ABC and iview on January the 25th. The ABC also helps us connect with local communities all around Australia, on radio, TV and online. And our media partner, Australian Community Media, helps us inspire millions of Australians by telling the stories of our extraordinary state and territory recipients and supporting our call for nominations nationwide. Our alumni partner is the National Day of People with Disability. We thank our official hotel partner, the Intercontinental Hotels Group. We appreciate your warm hospitality for our travelling nominees and recipients. We would also like to thank our cultural partner, the Australian National University, who through its schools of art and music, and the amazing students there, has designed the trophies and composed the music being played uh, for our recipients today. Our thanks also goes to our exhibition partner, the National Museum of Australia, who delivers the Australian of the Year exhibition around the country throughout the year. And last, but certainly not least, we appreciate the continued support of our legal partner, Minta Ellison. Please join me in thanking our partners for their vital ongoing support. And our final award this evening is the 2021 ACT Australian of the Year. History shows us the amazing fields of endeavour that have been covered off in the Australian of the Year Awards. We've got musicians, we've got scientists, medical researchers, even some sports people. Uh, I think it's a, a broad reflection of the qualities of people we have around the nation. Unlike me, you don't have to go overseas to realise your dreams. You can realise them right here. Just look into your own heart and look to your own land. I'm going to continue to be myself, keep standing up, for what I believe in. And hopefully by doing this, other people will follow. Our Australians of the Year are truly extraordinary. We can all be proud of the contributions they have made to our nation and the remarkable things they have achieved. They lead us, inspire us, help those in need and make our country a far better place. I think it's really important for all Australians to really think about who these people are and what they've done, not just for themselves, but for everyone. There's a temptation to take the easy route. I think that life will be better if we mould it to make it as comfortable as possible. Time is short, get amongst it and take your kids with you. If I can make a difference to someone else's life, if they can draw some strength I hearing what I say and knowing that I'm speaking on their behalf give me a lot of hope. I thank from the bottom of my heart those of you who give of your time, 
give of your expertise, give of your hearts, and especially those who risk their lives to make this country the greatest place on earth. Thank you. The Australian of the Year, they really do reflect what's important as an individual and collectively as a nation to the rest of the country, and they'll continue to shape the nation as we move in the future. And the nominees for the 2021 Australian of the Year are... Brigadier Alison Cray, an outstanding Defence Ambassador for the Australian Capital Territory. Now retired after 30 years of service, Alison is committed to supporting veterans and the defence industry and promoting cyber security through a wide range of board and advisory positions. Driven by a love of rowing, Alison established the Australian Defence Force Rowing Organisation and leads the King's Cup project, providing support to the ADF team and inspiring the next generation with her passion and drive. She's been recognised with a conspicuous service cross and was made a member of the Order of Australia in 2020. Caroline Hughes, a proud Ngunnawal woman who is dedicated to uniting people from all nations and walks of life. A true champion of Aboriginal culture, Caroline's efforts have enhanced the capacity of the Uranar Centre to meet the needs of the community and preserve cultural heritage. In her role as professional educator, Caroline has supported countless individuals in gaining the qualifications they need to succeed in their employment goals. Her leadership has driven the ACT to achieve the best national outcomes in the training sector for First Nations people. Professor Brendan Murphy, the former Government Chief Medical Officer and current Secretary of the Department of Health. Brendan provided expert advice to the Federal Government to close the international borders before the spread of COVID-19, a decision which saved tens of thousands of Australian lives. He was also responsible for leading the consensus medical advice to impose early introduction and implementation of physical distancing measures. Thanks to his calm leadership, Australia was able to prevent the COVID-19 virus from taking hold in the community during the first wave of the global pandemic. Patricia Turner, an Aranda and Gadanji woman who is committed to improving Aboriginal health outcomes by strengthening community control over Aboriginal health services. As CEO of the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation and lead convener of the Coalition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Community Controlled Peak Organisations, Pat fosters partnerships with all levels of government to ensure Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander participation in decision making. For her outstanding community leadership and contribution to public service, Pat has been awarded the Order of Australia. So can our nominees please uh, stand up so we can see you and applaud you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And once again, I'd like to invite uh, our guest of honour, the Chief Minister, and Katrina Fanning, uh, the uh, 2020 Australian of the Year. I feel like I'm in the worst position of the night. No one's interested in what I have to say because this is the most important thing. <laughs> So bear with me for just three things. Uh, firstly, to acknowledge the Ngunnawal people, uh, to thank them for their custodianship of this place, a place that I've lived on 30 years and have benefited from their support. Uh, secondly, it's, uh, we hear it quite often that we stand on the shoulders of giants to achieve things, and my life is certainly that. But it's very unusual to stand in the room with so many of the minutes. 
<laughs> of those giants. So uh, that's a little bit intimidating, but, um, but also grateful to, to actually get to meet and know those people. And thirdly, being the representative of the ACT is an absolute privilege. Too often in this country, um, the people in the community that makes up this place uh, doesn't necessarily get the treatment that we deserve as far as good people doing great things, not just for our own community, but for the nation. It's been an absolute privilege to represent this community. But to the main game. Uh, the 2021 Australian of the Year for the ACT is Professor Brendan Murphy. Professor Brendan Murphy, congratulations. Thank you. I can't say thank you, Prime Minister. Next slide, oh, please. No. Can I? But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's incredibly, incredibly humbling, particularly amongst such an extraordinary field of nominees, two outstanding First Nations leader and a military hero. I'm just amazingly humbled. What is it that got you into this area? In, into What inspired you to go into this line of work? I've been in health all my life. Um, clinical work, health reform, health leadership. And the CMO role in the Commonwealth was just the pinnacle of my health career. I didn't want this ghastly virus to come, but I was there when it came. And uh, I was determined to save the Australian people from what we saw in the rest of the world. And it's been the most privileged thing I've done all my life, particularly the fact that our leaders have listened to the health advice. That has been the most, and you've got one of the best of them in the room here, our leader, um, who was in the National Cabinet even advocating for statehood during the discussions <laughs> around pandemic. Um, and we have done so well on the ACT, and I do want to pay tribute to Karen Coleman, our outstanding Chief Health Officer, and all of the ACT community who have We've probably had one of the best responses in the whole nation. We've been responsible, we've been respectful, and we've got a bloody good track record. Yeah. Professor, why is this work so important to you? It's important to me because I care about people and I care about the health of our nation and I care about particularly the vulnerable people who are the people who are, who are so tragically affected by this virus. So right from the beginning, we were determined to do everything we could to protect those who might succumb to this virus and to a large extent we've, we've done that and uh, I get my pleasure out of the fact that our community has stuck together, has, we've been an incredibly unified community this year, politically, uh, socially, in every aspect and it has been uh, a collective success story. Any success I've had has been just a, collect a collection of the community. How has it felt to feel, to see that impact on the community that you just described? It was an extraordinary feeling to sort of wake up and get a text from the Prime Minister at six o'clock in the morning with one of the latest numbers and to be able to say that the latest numbers were getting were good and we, we were doing well and that we've been able to uh, manage to sort of restart our economy and to be as a nation uh, in a place that I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap being an Australian for any other nation in the world at the moment. Hmm. And <laughs> and Professor, do you see this award as making any difference to the work that you do? I think so. I think I th it is, as I said, it's incredibly humbling, probably not deserved, but, but I'll, <laughs> I'll accept it on behalf of my fellow medical leaders around the country, that group of people at HPPC who've led 
the nation's health response. But I, I think the message that I would like to convey is to all governments everywhere in the world, listen to your experts, follow their advice, and you'll do well as a government. Congratulations, uh, Professor Brendan Murphy. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>And while you're in the clapping mood, let's once again congratulate everyone who has won an award this evening. Uh, we've got the professor who is just on stage, senior Australian Patricia Anderson, Tara McClellan, a young Australian and local hero, Timothy Miller. Now, this evening's award recipients are now both our territory recipients for 2021 and our representatives that go on to the Australian of the Year Awards nationally. The Prime Minister will announce the national recipients on the eve of Australia Day. That's at 7.30, that's on the ABC and iview, and that will be here in Canberra at the National Arboretum. On behalf of all of us, I wish our recipients and our nominees every success in their future endeavours. To our recipients, we wish you all the best in the next step, the next stage of the program. And remember, if you would like to share any of uh, this evening's proceedings, that hashtag, once again, Australian of the Year, so it's hash AUS of the Year for brevity, uh, Australian of the Year, please do share uh, your experiences and your thoughts of the evening. And I encourage all of you to think about the people who inspire you, who inspire your communities, your networks, and your families. Think about them. Because you can nominate someone now for the 2022 Australian of the Year Awards. And if you want more information on that, just go to Australian of the Year, all one word, australianoftheyear.org.au. And that brings us to an end of the formal proceedings. Please do stay and enjoy the rest of the evening with us and take the opportunity to meet uh, the nominees and the recipients and uh, remember to socialise responsibly. You know who's here. Uh, and just a reminder that food and drinks can only be served to seated guests and service will commence very shortly. And while you can choose to enjoy your refreshments outside, please make sure that you take a seat at a table promptly. Thank you for your cooperation and for your understanding this evening. And uh, finally, may I ask the ACT uh, Chief Minister and Professor Kalmer to join us and the nominees and the recipients on stage for some photos. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations again to our nominees and our award recipients and have a fabulous evening. <laughs>